In this episode, I am joined by author and professional organizer, Jennifer Ford Berry. She's going to share her story and all kinds of tips on getting published as a professional organizer and what authoring books has done for her business. This is super interesting, so I hope you enjoy it. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. Each week, you'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Jen Obermeyer with Pro Organizer Studio. I am so excited that you are here. I am interviewing Jennifer Ford Berry today. I have been a guest on Jennifer's podcast, which is really awesome. She has one called The 29 Minute Mom. Um, and Jennifer has been an organizer for um, a lot longer than me, and she will tell us all about that story. <laughs> um, but she, um, Jennifer is the author of several books. So Jennifer is kind of sort of famous in that way, which is really cool. And so I wanted to bring her on to this chat to talk a little bit about what the process is for writing a book and what that does for your business. However, because Jennifer and I already know each other, uh, you know, somewhat more than that, I do definitely want to talk about some other topics today. And if you guys have questions for her or me or whatever comes up, I would like to hopefully kind of go with the flow on that too. So Jennifer, why don't you introduce yourself and a little bit about your business story and we will listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having me, Jen. I'm excited to be here and it's been a very long journey, but a very exciting one. I have been doing professional organizing for 16 years now. 16 years ago, I got laid off from my job as an advertiser for a radio station because of 9-11. And I had just had my daughter. She was a baby. And I first I thought, okay, cool. You can pay me unemployment. I'll stay home and be a stay-at-home mom. But probably about two months into that, I decided that I still loved business and I love marketing and I love creating things and using my brain. And it wasn't I wasn't cut out to be a full-time stay-at-home mom. So I started this little newsletter. I created a website, and I, it was called Organize This Life. And it was really bad. Like, <laughs> really, like, I did it myself. I didn't, it, you know, nothing compared to what we want to see today. But I had this little newsletter called Weekly Organizing Tips, and it was free. And I would literally, Jen, just, like, give out a tip every week that people could do. And I realized after a year of doing that that what people wanted was simple, straightforward tips, and they wanted me to tell them how to get organized. And they didn't want to read through paragraph after paragraph to figure it out. Um, and it's very similar to how I feel when I, you know, hired a financial advisor or I hired a trainer. Like, I don't want to learn all the ins and outs. I don't have time. I just want someone to tell me how to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you're the expert, you know, people are looking to you to just, you know, forget all the fluff. Just get to the point. So yeah. I think that's why they like the newsletter. So... Um, what was funny is that back, back up one second, why I became a professional organizer when I had my little layoff time was because I picked up this book called do what you love and the money will come. And back then, and you and I talked about this, like I did not know any professional organizers. It wasn't a big industry. Yeah. The two organizers that I really could place names to was Julie Morgenstern and Peter Walsh. And other than that, I didn't know anybody else doing this for a living. So when I was reading that book, I kept trying to talk myself out of starting this business because I thought, who, you know, how am I going to make money? Yeah, I would yeah. love it. I've loved organizing since I was five years old. But how am I going to make money? And really, as I got through the book, and um, I had really been going through like a spiritual, you know, look at myself and saying, am I the type of person that wants to do corporate America the rest of my life? Probably not, especially not as a mom. So I kind of decided, you know, going through and answering all these questions that really my true passion was organizing and it had always been that way. This mm -hmm. is literally how I was born. This is literally how God created me. And this, this skill that I have isn't something that everybody else has. But at the time I thought, you know, I didn't know that. I, this is just the way I was. And it was funny because now I look back, I'm thinking not every five-year-old wants to clean their bedroom. <laughs> Not every five-year-old asked their grandmother if they could organize her house every time they went there. 
So um, I decided to say to myself, you know, this is my skill set. This is my passion. And if I have, if I am passionate about it, people are going to see that. And they're probably going to, you know, they might hire me, you know. So I started my business in Charlotte. And what happened is, um, the funny thing is. So you were that, living in Charlotte at the time? Yeah, I was living in Charlotte at the time. So I had started this business. And then as my daughter started getting a little older, I had this real pull to go home back to New York. And okay. um, so when I moved back to New York, it was funny because it was kind of like organizing was kind of taking off in Charlotte. But back here in Buffalo, people were like, what's a professional organizer? Okay. So it was a little um, behind the times. And so what I decided to do is I decided to go back to corporate America for a little bit so I could get a solid paycheck. Um, and then uh, about a year and a half later, I had baby number two. And it was, I had had two miscarriages in between. So when I had him, I really didn't want to miss a moment. So I opened another business. I left my corporate job. And when there was no customers um, at my business, I would start writing my first book. So I had, I had this shop, right? It was a consignment shop. I had a baby. I had my grandmother with me to help me with the baby. And I had a business going on. But when he was taking a nap, and there was no customers, I was writing this book. Wow. So there's no excuse not to get it done. If you really have a dream <laughs> of writing a book, trust me, you can get it done. And what I had used is that weekly organizing tip newsletter. Mm -hmm. I had saved all of that. I didn't know at the time that that was going to be the basis of my first book. So um, the book was done. And what I did is I self-published it briefly for maybe a year. And I kept track of all of the sales. Um, on a spreadsheet and why looking back that was like a super good idea better than I thought it was at the time is because when I went to publishers I had proof that this book would sell mm -hmm. and I mean we can go on and on about the publishing side of it and so much has changed but the biggest thing is I think that still proves to be true mm -hmm. um, that any publisher there's they're being bombarded by um, authors every day and they want to they don't want a huge risk and so it was less yeah. risky for them to see hey I have a customer base. I have people that want to buy a book like this. And so that's when the first book ended up, um, you know, starting. And that, you know, once those, that first book became published, it gave me a much bigger platform. And then, you know, I got to do my dream. I got to sell that business. I, you know, people were no longer saying, well, what exactly do you do for a living? And it took off from there. That is amazing. That, okay, so I have so many questions because on the one hand, it's like this was amazing for your business. And then on the other hand, I'm thinking your personal life, you're still trying to balance like having two young children and be the organizer. So, mm -hmm. um, so I want to ask you about both of those things. But first of all, like how did you, because I know so many people go through this where they're like, I really want to start this business. I mean, now you're saying like 16 years ago, you're trying to convince yourself this is a thing and it's not just the silliest idea in the world. And yeah. people are still going through that because it's just mm -hmm. not like a well-known accepted thing that people can and will pay money for. So how did you, or what were the, th and I know that like, you know, so much of what you do, like is your, your spiritual life is a big part of that. So I'm sure that that plays into this answer, but how did you, you know, take that leap of faith of, you know, being able to balance like having I don't know if you had kids you know with like you said their grandmother or in preschool or a nanny and like going out and like making this business happen were you doing that really like all on your own did you have an assistant from the beginning like tell me like what that was like just in terms of your time yeah my time first of all I will say this that one of my best and I, I didn't know all these things. I'm talking from 16 years of experience. Yeah. Looking back at my younger self, um, the two little kids, you know, one of the things I really realized is that I made the most of my time. I hate wasting time. Um, I'm very efficient with my time. And so I, and I also love a good hustle. So I work my tail off. None <laughs> of anything you hear from me today came to me easy. I literally work like probably more than I should because I love what I do. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's the hugest blessing in the world. I mean, if you have to make a paycheck every single week, you might as well like what you're doing. So I that's a blessing and it totally can happen. Um, so I'm very grateful that I took that leap of faith, but yeah, with babies and toddlers, my husband even was out of working out of town for five years. Oh wow. And he was gone. Like he would be gone like four days and then he'd be home eight days. 
So that was all going on when I was building my business and my, writing my books. And I just, I balanced it. So if, you know, if I needed a babysitter, I would keep it very small, like maybe two or three days a week. I didn't put my kids in daycare. I had somebody come to my house. Um, I, like I said, I brought them to work with me when I had to. And I did, I did what I had to do to make it work. Like I knew that once I started this business, it wasn't going to come easy and I would have to put my nose to the ground and really hustle. And so I kind of just did it all in between. Like I would be with a client and then I'd have to go get my kids and then I'd be writing at night. So <laughs> it was kind of just like a juggling act. But as long as I put some effort into each part of it every single day, it got done. You can't, yeah. you know, I find a lot of times women are always worried about what wasn't done by the end of the day compared to giving themselves credit for what is done. Mm -hmm. And because that to-do list is never going to end until you die. So get over it. Like it's just going to be there. So you do your best that you can every single day. And when it's, you know, when you're done with that, you're, you're like, okay, tomorrow's a new day. You know, as long as you know, you put your best effort in, but it wasn't easy. There was a lot. My days were very, very busy. <laughs> Very I can busy. imagine. I can imagine. Okay. So just in terms of like putting books out there, like as a marketing tool. Um, and I don't know if you want to speak to how you said, you said when you first put out a website that it was just, it was just bad or it was what it was. Yeah. Did you kind of like evolve the website at the same time as you know, your books became more popular and like, did you think that that helped your business overall or like, what do you really like attribute some of the growth to? Well, I've changed my website. I've changed my logo. I've lost track. Uh, how many times? I'm going to change it again this year because I'm going to go in a different direction. So, um, yeah, it's totally evolved. So has marketing. So has social media. So it has these tools that we have. You know, I used to make my websites with front pages. And now we have, you know, Wix and things that are just moving around with a click of a button. I was doing coding. So it was just a nightmare. But um, it's, it's totally evolved. And the thing is, it's like you asked if I had an assistant. I didn't have an assistant because I wanted to keep all the proceeds. And, you know, I didn't have an assistant for maybe into the third book. And even then, I had several different assistants because I would hire people that would be gung-ho to work for me. And I would notice that they didn't have as strong of a worth, work ethic as I have myself or I would like them to have. So, and then it would just be like, okay, by the time I'm holding your hand all day long, I could have done it myself. I mean, honestly. Yeah. So it's been really hard as far as assistants go um, and virtual assistants and things like that. So you got to be careful with that. Um, and, you know, it's just the book, the, the whole, the book thing and the organizing business are literally like two separate businesses. Okay. They're the same theme. They're the same um, information. And, you know, one gives me a platform. They go, sometimes I get, speaking engagements from the organizing side. And sometimes I get organizing jobs from the book side. So, but if you want to get into writing books, just tell yourself right now, you're going into another business. It's not the same. It's completely different. Okay, um, so talk to us more about that then. Talk yeah. to us about like what the reality is versus what we think it might be right now. <laughs> Whatever hours you're putting into your full-time organizing business, you're going to put into that book. Because, um, you know, it's all like when I first started out and, you know, it's funny because Peter Walsh ended up t talking to me um, when I wrote my first book and he's like, don't ever write a book for the money. Write a book because you have something to say that you want the world to know. And like, don't even have it in your head how much money you're going to make or how many books you're going to sell. You have to do it from your heart because you want your message to be out there in the world. Like that's the real reason to write a book. So you're going to put your heart and soul into it. And then you're either going to let it just do whatever it does and be okay with that, or you're going to pound the pavement with marketing and promoting because especially now, um, you have to be your own publicist, your own marketing person, your own everything, because the publishers from when I started to now do way, way, way less, okay. like, way less. So, um, but you know, Peter was right. I had that first book was on fire because I had a story to tell. I had a message to tell, and I really felt passionate about it. And, um, you know, it started out that they were doing a lot of promotions behind the scene. But, again, this is important to know. Even if you go with a traditional publisher, you only get really one year of marketing. After that, you're on your own. I mean, they'll still put it in Barnes & Noble. They'll still – I mean, our bookstores are going away pretty much anyways. But when I started, yeah. you know, there was a lot of stores and a lot of outlets. 
they'll do that for you. And that's a perk. But you are going to be pushing your books all the time. It's a tremendous amount of work. Tremendous. Yeah. Unless you just want to put it up on Amazon, you know, and let it ride. Depends what you're looking for. So, um, you know, anything you want to do well, you have to put your heart and soul into it. And you have to work probably double of what you had in mind. Okay. So just in terms of, you know, you said you moved to New York and people up there were not really educated on what the industry was even about. Do you feel like once you wrote that book that it just gave you a credibility that people said, okay, I believe that she <laughs> can do what she says she can do. Or did it at least like help explain to them like what the possibilities were of using a professional organizer. So the long, the long, <laughs> the long answer or the short, the short version of that question is, did it help you get more clients, but also did it help you get clients that really understood what you were about? Absolutely. Because, um, it, first of all, it gave me a platform. So, People will start, you'll, I mean, it's, it, it went from nothing to crazy because I was on radio shows all the time. You know, I was being interviewed by bloggers. I was, you know, people were putting me in magazines without me even reaching out. They were calling saying, hey, do you want to be in Better Homes and Garden? Do you want to be, uh, you know, in organizing magazines? So it's just kind of funny how just putting a book out into the world gives you like this expert status when really... Yeah it kind of makes me laugh because you're always like, we're always evolving. Yeah. So, um, you know, it does, it gave me a lot of business. It gave me a lot of cool opportunities and, you know, it made me money. So it was a bonus all the way around. Um, it definitely will tell people what you're more about. I've had people that said, Oh, I can't believe that you're in my house and I'm hiring you because I had your book, you know, six years ago. But then on the other hand, there's people that don't even know I wrote a book and I'm in their house organizing. Yeah. So it just depends, you know. Um, I think that it gives you also, <clears throat> when you're writing your thoughts down, you're doing like a lot of research and you're getting really straight in your mind how you organize. And so that kind of helps your your yourself when you're out in the field too. It's hours and hours and days. And it's like, basically you have, if you sign, you have one year to write your book. So, you know, you're going to be doing a lot of work in a year. And um, I think it really gets your thoughts straight of how you want to say the message. So that's just going to relay into how you speak it to a client too. Yeah. Um, but by all means, it definitely helps your business. So do you have any tips and then we can move on to some other topics that I know we want to talk about. Do you have any tips? Like if you, I mean, I know you've been in our industry for a while, but also you said you've seen the book publishing industry change a lot. So what advice would you give to someone now who wanted to put that out there as part of their building their empire and building that expert status kind of thing? Like if that was truly their goal, like what would you recommend to them? I think, <laughs> I think I would honestly do it exactly how I did it, knowing what I know now. I would self-publish briefly. Um, I would keep track. I would prove, you know, and the thing now is you would have a mailing list and people would say, hey, I love this part about your book or hey, I hate this part about your book. And you could get feedback. If you have a blog, you can write your blog posts every day based mm -hmm. on your book and kill, you know, two birds with one stone. You can multitask that way. You can speak your chapter you wrote last week into your podcast. I mean, you can be getting your name out there and making money now while you're writing a book behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I would self-publish. I would show that I was credible. I would go to publishers and I would lock one in. Not because it's the best and only way. Um, and we can get more into my story in a minute, but because there's no faster way to get your name out around the world than to go with a publisher because you as an individual do not have the resources that these publishers have in place. I mean, bookstores are basically waiting. Amazon's basically waiting, saying, here, give me the next book. And that's all over the world. So um, me peddling my books around when I first started, you know, like I did, had no you know there was no comparison to handing it over to a publisher move on to the next topic which is what is next in jennifer's life and world um because i know she you know i'm always saying to people the cool thing about having an organizing business is that it can change forms and you can take it with you no matter where you go um so i think that 
you know, your story of how it has evolved through the years is so fitting for that. But also, like, will you just tell us about, like, what your next new ideas are and how, where you want to take it and what you want to do with it and how you see it evolving for you? Sure. So basically, you know, one thing I wanted to mention earlier is that if you're an entrepreneur, I think it's the best way to look at your business is like a stool. So it's not just one leg or it's not going to be balanced. So what I have done is I've created different pockets of income and different streams of income so that you can ride out the ebb and flow of your business. Um, and it's mm -hmm. funny because throughout the year, you know, I might be more, I have other businesses, so I might be more focused on this business because of the season. And then I come back to, you know, this or that, or maybe I'm really focused on a book and I have to tell my clients, like, you know, I can only take a few a week or whatever the case may be. So it's, it's, and that keeps it interesting, honestly. I, I'm a person yeah. that likes change, so I get bored if everything's the same all the time. I don't know if that's every organizer. Maybe it is, but totally. It's definitely me. I get bored very easily. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I like to create new ideas, and I like to create new challenges. So um, mm -hmm. it's interesting, though, because, you know, I think after years and years of doing this, I've realized that – just being true to myself is the key, not trying to be like somebody else. So if you're starting your business, don't even worry about like what all of us other organizers are, you know, how we're branding ourselves and how, what our message is, because you have to, if you're not true to yourself and you're not going with your unique skill set and how you relate to people, then it's not going to yeah. work anyways. People are going to see right through that. And you also have to know what's driving you and it can't be the money. It has to be like an inner reason why you're organizing and for me it's very clear that why I do what I do is because I want everybody in the world to stop having a death grip on things and I want to go against the grain of what marketing and society is telling us that we have to accumulate and gather and I want them yeah. to be so free that they you know they can go out and do their own passion and live their own purpose because there's nothing better I can tell you that, like I said, I work a lot and I work like a dog, but I love it. Everything I've created, I love working at it because I know my why. And so that's the motivation. If mm -hmm. you're just making yourself do this business because you think you should, you'll never last. It has to be an inner drive. And so for me, like I said, it's to free for people to free up. So when I go in and work with a client and their house is a disaster and I'm like, they're like, I don't even know where to start. I'm overwhelmed. My excitement comes from, I want to know what their vision for their life is, not just for their kitchen. Yeah. Like if you yes. had less things, because every single thing we own takes up space, time, energy, and money. I call it STEM. Everything. So you have to be very particular of what you're allowing in your space because you're giving up those things, what, what you're allowing in your life. It's going to take away those resources that I could be using to make an impact on the world. And so um, that's what excites me when they start – going after the job they want to do, when they start losing weight, when they start getting out of debt, when they find love, all those things are because the clutter has now been moved out of the way. And I agree. that's yep. the most motivating part. So what's next for me is really being bold about my spirituality when it comes to getting organized and really learning how to organize God's way. Because if you look through the Bible, everything was written down for us. I mean, he spelled it out. And we're trying to make up all these new fancy words and fancy slogans and fancy systems when it's really all there. So for me, I want to be bold about that. And I want my message to be that, you know, your life is about living, not about things. And nobody's going to remember you for how many pairs of shoes you owned. Nobody's going to remember you for, you know, how many, you know, how big your, how many square feet your house was. They're going to know you for how you made an impact on their life. And if you're constantly shoveling clutter around, you're never going to get there. So if you're passionate about being an organizer, I say go for it and figure out what is your why and what's your spin on it because you're going to need mm -hmm. that to connect with people. So I, um, you know, I have a lot of things in the work, but oh, you'll see that kind of branding coming from me from here on out. I had, you know, I'm going to tell you guys that those years and years of having that publisher, they, as my, um, brand evolved in a spiritual way they really tried to keep it quiet because when a book is sold all over the world you know you may offend somebody with christianity and so a lot of times they would say well why don't you not put so many of those christian words in your books or let's take that scripture out or even the last book think and live clutter free 
that was supposed to be organized now your body, mind, and spirit. And they took out yeah. the word spirit. So it just, I felt like I started getting, you know, somebody else was running the show and that didn't feel good. So um, I have recently parted ways with my publisher and I'm now just for the first time in what, 11 years in charge of how my books are distributed, where they're going and what they say. Um, and not to say that if you pick up one of my books, it wasn't me at all, but I want it to be 100% me. And, yes. you know, I can't be the organizer for everybody. I can only be the way I want to be. So that's what I'm focusing on this year. We've also talked um, how I really want to start a conference. This I don't know it'll be 2018. If it's not 2018, it's going to be 2019. Just to bring more organizers together, um, organizers that want to look at organizing as a lifestyle, people that want to apply organizing as a lifestyle because we're really living in this you know time where pinterest and um shows on tv are making it seem like if you're you're not you know organizing is all about getting your home perfect and it's mm -hmm. not that at all i mean it's not even just about how you you know put your sh shoes on a shelf in your closet it's the whole entire lifestyle so i think that's really exciting yeah. it is because you are definitely not alone. I mean, and I know you're not, you're not alone. I know you know that you're not alone in being an organizer who sees the connection of whether you call it your, your spiritual life or your mental energy or whatever it is like in your heart and soul, that there is a for sure, for sure connection between your stuff and like what is going on with you. And, you know, again, whatever, I know you have specific words that you want to use to describe that, but like, I know that a lot of other organizers out there feel that. You know, mm -hmm. and so I think that people who, um, I don't know if you've noticed, or maybe you can tell us what you've noticed. Like when people first come to you, do they say, I have a stuff problem, but it's more than just that? Like, do they know that? Or do they come to see that through your work together, that it's not just about like the stuff that you're moving around? It's, you know what I mean? I feel like people must know that on some level, that it's not just. I think it's <laughs> funny. I think it's like half and yeah. half. Some people yeah. do get it and then the other ones don't get it at all and it's like you know day one and you're, you're thinking you're like oh boy I have a lot of work to do here like I don't even know yeah. if they're ready for my message um because it's gonna we're gonna go way deeper than you know this closet and yeah um and I know that before I go in I can see the potential in people I can see the potential in space so I already have in my head where I want them to go I just got to get them on the bus mm -hmm. with me and that's right. sometimes pretty interesting because you don't know if they're going to want to do it. But I've had, the most, okay. I've had clients where I feel like I'm never going to get through to them. But there's this part of me that feels like I wouldn't be there if, it's, if I'm not meant to get through to them. So, um, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes the ones that are the most lost are the most rewarding. So if you're just, you know, there's going to be your clients that you get and you're just, it's just a joy, like easy house. They'll let you do whatever you can buy, you know, whatever you need. And they're just so happy you're there. And then there's the other ones that everything you do, they're going to question you. And after a while, they're like, are you the expert or am I, <laughs> you know, it's going to be both. And I, yeah, I used to try to avoid that second client because it was, I was young and I was, you know, not as confident as in my ability to help them. But now it's like, Whoever God gives me this week as a new client, I'll take it and run with it because that's, you know, I'm not there to just make their house look perfect. I'm there to get them to the next level. And sometimes that takes several sweeps with the stuff, you know, I call right. it sweeps. I'll know when I'm talking to someone, I'll think to myself, it's going to be three sweeps before this girl gets it, you know, or this one's <laughs> going to get it the first time because they're just like, I give my, you know, I give it up. I don't know what else to do. Help me. Yeah. And I usually always yeah. ask people, you know, how, how willing and ready are you for a change? Like a serious, deep lifestyle change. And I want that mm -hmm. answer because then it will tell me, you know, how it's going to go. That's, that is a great question. That is a great question, I guess, to start with and help you filter like where you need to steer each person. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and sometimes they don't even know, they just know that they can't live the way they've yeah. been living. And the thing is yeah. too, it's, it's, this is like a morbid statement, but I use it all the time. I was even um, speaking at a church Sunday and it was a pretty liberal older group, which is the toughest group to get to because they've had, you know, parents from the great depression era and that's a whole nother story and psychology. 
And I have to yes. stand there and say, you know, you came in the world empty handed for a reason and we're leaving empty handed for a reason. And that really shakes some people up sometimes, but it's, we know it, but we don't stop and think about it, you know, and we just keep going through the motions. It's like, no, we have one chance to get it right. And, um, you know, I think also people don't even realize how good advertising and marketing is to make you think that you need something. So you have to be pretty intentional yeah. um, about fighting against those messages. I mean, I was in advertising. I know how to do that. So you're trained to do it. That's a good point. <laughs> you know, and um, you have to, yeah. yeah. you know, it's just like with my clients, they're always like, well, what can I go and buy before you get here? Like, what should I get? They're so ready to spend. And every single time my answer is exactly the same. Zero, nothing, nada. Do not bring another thing yeah. into your house. Um, we're not even remotely close to that answer yet. So um, I think that's just the funny part about it is that people want to get organized with organizing products. And it's like, that might not even be the best product for you. Yeah. Well, I will tell you this, Jen. I don't know if I told you this story yeah. before, but this is a really perfect story of that point. Um, one night I, I used to um, play volleyball every Monday night. So my husband was flicking through the channels while I was at volleyball. And he cracked up because he was going through and there was this episode of Hoarders and they were showing this lady buying my book and it was like great publicity. Like she's going into books in millions, she's going oh, through the wow. shelves and she picks up the book and she's like holding it and they're just filming it. And it's like, you know, you're like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Okay. How long will they show? This will be awesome. And then she goes home and you know what she was hoarding? She was hoarding containers and books. Now, you know, she never read my book. No, right. no. They showed her living room. Every single thing she owned was stacked from floor to ceiling in clear, see-through plastic containers. You know, like the right organizing product, but she wasn't getting rid of anything. So she was grabbing all of this stuff. So she had a collection of things and containers and a collection of books. Um, so it just goes to show you, like, buying an organizing book isn't going to get you organizing, and buying organizing products isn't going to get you organized. So it's just, it's yeah. it funny. That is hilarious. Well, hilarious, but also so sad. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I know. It's, this is like a whole nother, like I said, it's like a whole nother topic about like why things are the way that they are. But it's like, I, I feel grateful that, like you said, God made some people like us mm -hmm. <laughs> and that we can be matched up with people who really, really need us <laughs> and that it can be like a fulfilling career. So that's, uh, definitely like a blessing and all of that. Yeah. That is really exciting. And you'll definitely have to keep it, keep us posted on what, what and where you end up yeah. doing this or bring people together. Right now I'm looking at Charlotte, but I'm excited because I think, you know, I'm in another industry and when we do our conferences, it gives us all of a bond and it helps, um, like during the year. Cause you know, it's not like we're a teacher and we know all these other teachers that we can go to with our questions. We're pretty much, you know, a, a unique group so that just yeah. like you have with your group you know it's just people need that and especially if they're starting out um they don't want to pay the price that napo charges for conference you can go you know still get together meet up get ideas get support you don't have to spend you know two thousand dollars so i'm excited to yeah. do it um i just you know i definitely will let everybody know when i'm ready <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome what is your um, I know you've touched on this some already, so it's not like we haven't talked about it, but when it comes to you being able to do all the things and work as hard as you do, I know a big part of it is having that really strong why, which I completely hear you. I completely agree with, but like also what are the things that are most important to you in terms of like self care so that you don't burn out either physically or mm -hmm. emotionally on the many things that like you have your hands in? Oh, I call it fuel. And, you know, everybody's different. For I will just go ahead and tell you, like, my fuel. So my fuel is, you know, a morning with God. It's constant worship music in my car. It's podcasts if I'm working alone when, you know, a lot of my clients aren't even with me anymore, um, you know, when I yeah. get started. So I, I don't – I'm very, very particular of what I let my brain in my ears and in front of my eyes. And I, yep. you know, as far as my body goes, I get the same amount of sleep every night. I drink nothing but water after my coffee all day. <laughs> um, and I'm huge into holistic living. So, um, 
you know, I feel like I wouldn't have the energy. And I know yeah. as my holistic approach gets stronger and stronger over like maybe the last five years, that is giving, you know, because I'm getting older. And the thing is, I also wonder, you know, physically with this job, first of all, I mean, how many days do you go to work and you're like, I just worked out at work <laughs> because it's so yeah. physical. But I don't want to quit anytime soon. I mean, I can't imagine not doing this. And so I feel like it's important for us as organizers to take care of our bodies and have that energy because if you if you start out your day and you're drinking coffee and next thing you know you're grabbing pop it's like your energy is gonna tank by two o'clock when your day is not over so um i think it's really important as far as you know making sure you have those veggies those fruits on hand because you usually don't sit down i know i don't and take like an hour lunch break it's never gonna happen um it's be nice but i'm just not that person i want to like get through my day so i always have things that I'm grabbing so that I don't wait till the end of the day and go home and I'm starving and I'm just throwing whatever into my mouth. Um, I read a lot. I love reading. And mm -hmm. I, you know, also just like to do things um, just to have fun. Like I always, you know, if you're an organizer, you like to plan. So I'm definitely the planner in my friend group. I'm the planner of vacations yeah. in my home. I love traveling. I love doing anything um, that's an experience. Like I don't care about things. But I do care about relationships and experiences. And I always laugh and say, like, you can come in my house right now. And if you wanted something, I'd give it to you. Because I'm really not attached to anything. <laughs> but I'm super <laughs> attached to people. And I yeah. love experiences. So it's like, I'll get rid of stuff. But I like to keep everybody in my life all the time. So it's a funny, interesting way of looking at things. Um, but yeah, I don't, as far as the stuff goes, I could care less. Except for my books. That's like my one weakness. I feel like I always have a new book I have to order on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay, that's it. those were all such good answers. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for sharing all those other ideas because I think it is important, you know, in terms of long-term strategy to come up with things that you still enjoy doing that support your core business but that um, are also helping you just get visibility and helping you, you know, grow your expertise in the world. Um, so thank you so much for everything that you share that is a part of that. Absolutely. I think, you know, the cool thing about this profession is like you said early in the beginning, you take it anywhere you want. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, you know, and that's, that's something that is really unique to the business. And obviously like for me, I'm planning on starting my business in Florida soon because I know I want to end up back in Florida. So, um, you know, all you need is a client base. You don't need hundreds and hundreds of clients. So no matter what town you live yes. in, big or small, focus on a small number and grow. Because, you know, what, is, what do they say? Like 80% of your income comes from 20% of your clientele, something like that. Yeah. That, I feel like that's true for me. Yeah. Yeah. That, thank you so much for sharing all that. So, so valuable for people who are starting out or somewhere in the middle of just growing and trying to figure out like what their next thing is, because you can still have a next thing even once you've decided to do this. Yeah. That's such an important message to have. Yeah. Um, okay, so thank you so much. And if people want to learn more about you, they can go to your website or they can also listen to your podcast because you have so many great tips and stuff. I know your podcast is the 29 minute mom. Mm -hmm. Um, and then your website is, is it jenniferfordberry.com? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Jenniferfordberry.com. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to remember. And then I'm on Facebook under author organizer, Jennifer Ford Berry. So, and then Instagram yes. is organized now, which is the name of the books. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for doing this. It was so fun. Thanks for having me, Jen. Okay, talk to you soon, girl. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.